at the Navy Air Force game in the cold and snow. It's clear, it's sunny, the temperature is in the 60s, it's a little bit on the breezy side, but what a contrast to a week ago. And certainly the midshipmen appreciate it. They, as you know, have lost to the weather and to Air Force 40 to 6, and so they're very happy. Quakers very lightly today because they're facing a team that is undefeated and is on its way to its fifth straight Ivy League championship. But then again, Pennsylvania's had a very long and illustrious history of college football. And to bring us up to date is joined by Wilkinson. Well, Billy Institution was founded in 1740 by William Penn. And over the years, they've had a truly glorious football history. <laughs> Are most familiar, I believe, to all college football fans. And good John Outland. The Outland Trophy given each year to the outstanding lineman in college football. Story today. And an Ivy League team muster the strength, the skill, the finesse to compete successfully with the Service Academy. That's a good point because this is the toughest opponent that Pennsylvania will face this year. But the question is, can Navy bounce back? And I think to get a handle on that is to talk to a former coach here at Navy who was with us on our broadcast team, Rick Rosano. Rick? Bill, as Bud Wilkinson would agree, I'm sure, coming back from defeat is very difficult, especially at the hands of an arch rival like Air Force. But one thing that the midshipmen learn, and they learn well here at the Naval Academy, is that you will come back from defeat, and defeat is only temporary. So I believe today that Navy will be able to come back against the University of Pennsylvania. All right, Rick, and Penn is coming out onto the field. The midshipmen will be here very shortly, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff for this battle today. Well, the flip of the coin has been made, and Navy has won the toss. Because there is a pretty good stiff wind coming in from the north, Navy has elected to defend the goal line and take the wind here in this first quarter, so Penn will receive the football, which means that the Penn offense will be out there now. There is Chris Flynn, number 27, and Jim Bruni, the two receivers. Offensively, this is the way they will go. Crochecchia, the quarterback, Lorano, the fullback, Rich Comizio, the tailback, then Rob Williams and Ken Saunders, the wideouts, and Brent Novoselsky will be the tight end. Up front, Ernst, Wilkins, Bonato, Panzini, and Peterson. Not a particularly big front line, certainly not as big as Navy, but uh, rather quick. Defensively, for the Naval Academy, Cook, Plants, Blazes, Van Horn, and Van Holzen up front. Then Tom Doman, who was our player of the game for Navy last week against Air Force, along with Vince McBeth. And in the secondary, Heron, Stefanon, Kiefer, and Mark Furling. The officials for today's game, you'll laugh at this, and particularly if we were on the Halloween weekend, the referee is Vincent Price today. The umpire, Ronald Clagis, the linesman, Sanford Rivers, the line judge, Paul Ty. The field judge is Walter Lucas. The back judge, Nicholas Trainer. And here is Bill Byrne, who hopes Bud Wilkinson to have a better day today than he did a week ago, the quarterback of Navy. Well, it was an almost impossible day to throw the ball. Uh, he had the misfortune to throw five interceptions, and of course that's one of the reasons that it was such a one-sided score. But with these conditions and with the class athlete that Burns is, he's hit... Uh, 61 of 116 passes. That's 52% so far this year. So he is a solid, solid football player. Woman needs to complete 75 more yards to become the all-time leading passer in Navy history. Those uh, those bright yellow caps that you see uh, that the brigade is wearing today, you know, the great big N on top, and then it says, Shake the Quakers. So that's a little stunt that they uh, pulled today. Coming into this game today, Pennsylvania is undefeated, 4-0, leading the Ivy League. Navy is 3-2. Last meeting, as I mentioned, was in 1960. And uh, this is probably one of the closest long series rivalries in the history of college football. Look at that, 21-20-4. 
with Penn uh, holding that one game edge. So the midshipmen are hoping that they can win today. But it's kind of a historical note, really, because this is the first visit the Quakers have made, can you believe this, to Annapolis since 1915? All of the other games uh, have been played in the NFL. An hour set to go. Bob Sunderland on the nine will kick off. And the deep men, as I mentioned, are Bruni and Chris Flynn. Flynn, I think, is a name that you're going to hear a lot today. Where's number 27? Really a flashy runner. And although he is on the depth roster, number two to Comizio, I think you'll see him in the lineup a lot. After all, he's leading the Ivy League in rush. High kick coming down to Flynn. 15, 20, and it fell that it's a 27-yard line. So, it'll be Kochekia, Comizio, Lorano, and Saunders in the backfield. Up front, Cook, Plants, Blazes, Van Horn, and Van Halsen, Macbeth, and Doman, the linebackers, Stefano, and Kiefer, Fairley, and Harris. Ted uses a big variety of formations. There'll be in two tight ends, sometimes three tight ends in the game. The basic set, however, is the two wide-out flankers, as you can see. Rob Williams went out to the left, a long way out. Deep man is Comizio, and he rips off. Nice game. Good six. And the blocking in the offensive line was just outstanding. Comizio is averaging 5.7 yards a try as we see the play again. You can see the handoff. And he squares his shoulders, leans forward, accelerates beautifully as he breaks through the line of scrimmage and is stopped by the linebacker and the secondary after a good game. Fumble picked up immediately by Joe Lorello, the fullback, who had the ball bobbled out of his arms. So that brings a no-gainer up there for them. Third down. Yeah, that's a tough thing to have happen when you mix it up yourself and instead of having the defense force that problem. Especially when the hole is there. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> that's good. That's good. Penn has been trying to get a little more balance between pass and run, but uh, the running attack has been good for them. Now they go with the split down. And Andrews in motion goes back to the opposite side. Chikia makes it short and throws a deep one intended for Novoselsky and he drops the ball and is going to be a penalty against Mark Foley, number 41 of Navy. They all went for that uh, first fake by Trochikia and uh, when he then dropped back again and put the ball way, way downfield, Furley was beaten. Furley got involved and hit the receiver, and it was interference. Kochikia back, fakes short, rolls out, has plenty of time, great protection, delivers the ball way downfield. You know, if he could have run, I have a feeling he could have run about 40 yards. It looks like he could, but... Uh, Rick, do you have something for us? It was a funny situation by the Pennsylvania quarterback. He faked short, and the defensive linemen for Navy all went for the short fake. Nobody put the rush on the passer. Big game for Pennsylvania. I guess so. First down of midfield for the Quakers. This is the opening sequence after getting the first kickoff. So Chip, you know, nice fake. Got some heat that time. Ooh, that was a dangerous game. Kent Van Horn, a 274-pound senior out of Marengo, Ohio, was not going to let him get set that time. Kochicki well, had uh, great poise. It was a screen pass pay call, so that uh, he was expecting to let the rush men get in after the original blocking, but he didn't expect him to come in that quickly as Van Horn did, and he didn't have time to deliver the ball on target. That's the youthful coach of Pennsylvania, Ed Zubrow. By the way, the uh, Quakers were called for having an ineligible man downfield. Now, will they let it go? Well, they're going to take the uh, 15 yards. I guess there's not much question about that. Makes the first and 25. So any game that uh, the Quakers have had so far has really been nullified. And they go back to the 35-yard line. That's Vincent Price, our referee. And Coach Zubro said that the problem with this team, he said they've been developing very well consistently. They said they're just getting too many penalties all season and we're missing offensive check signal audibles at the line of scrimmage. You know, that can't be. Uh, Buddy gave the loss of down on that play and uh, that blue was a uh, unnecessary reference. Oh, was it? Oh, well, then he did give the signal too for uh, an ineligible man downfield. 
Well, just to clarify the point, the ineligible man downfield does not carry the loss of down time. But the unnecessary roughness, being the uh, more stringent of the two penalties, took precedence. And that means that it was the 15-yard penalty back to the, uh, 20, the uh, 35, and now it comes to the 37. Tom Doman on the stop. And it's third down and a big, uh, a big mount again. And a tough, tough situation for any offensive football team. 23 yards away from the first down. Long count by Krochikia. And looks to the sidelines. Doman missed him. The pass is completed to Rob Andrews, but it was not enough for the first down. About four yards short, Gary, uh, Greg Stefanon covering on the play. Krochikia rolls out very effectively. Uh, has the option to pass run on these rollouts. See him sprinting to the right. Gets turned upfield, finds Andrews open, hits him right at the sidelines. Excellent execution on the play, but short for the first down. So the corner is coming to the lineup, Dave Fosnock, 37-yard average. And he ought to be able to put maybe in a pretty good hole here. It's against the wind. The ball will be held up a little bit. And uh, Furley calls for the fair catch. Ooh, that was close. At the 13-yard line. So the midshipmen now will get an opportunity to see if their offense can function on a good day rather than a snowy field as it was a week ago. Back in just a moment. Here's the offense for the midshipmen. Bill Byrne, the senior quarterback. Chuck Smith, who is now third in the nation in all-purpose running, rushing, and scoring. Curtis Brown starting today in place of the injured Chuck McKenna. Fullback, Tony Hollinger, Mike Ray, and John Smith. And I think we may see a change there, bud, because there had been some talk about two tight ends. Let's check. I think they'll use that formation a great deal during the day. First down for the midshipmen. No score, first quarter. Here's Chuck Smith. Oh, it's deja vu. Like last week. <laughs> no game. Defensively. It's Lista, Desir, and Sebastianelli in that three-man front. Then the outside linebackers are Jeff Portner and Hickensky. The inside men are McConnell and Inski. And then in the secondary, Heinz, Tom Flynn, no relation to Chris, Don Wilson, and James Fangmeyer. This Penn team has not allowed a point in the first half of any game played thus far this season. Well, that's a pretty remarkable statistic. Second and ten. And here is Byrne. Moving over the middle. Stephen was wide open as he came out late. Burn drops back. A little bit of a running fake to Smith. Sets, looks downfield. See Smith is wide open coming across the field. No one's close. As he turns upfield, he really does get hammered by the last ten defensive men. The men are ready. First down. Gain of 13 on the play on the 25-yard line. Nice block on the tight end and going through the line very quickly at that right half spot. Kevin, well, it looked like Kevin, actually it was Curtis Brown who carried it, but the tight end, John Snicken, was the one who ran it through. It's not a thing that uh, Andy expects to do today. Run far more traps than they uh, had previously. Brown is a great ball carrier. He's averaging 5.6 yards per carry. Mike Ray has gone. Here comes Chuck Smith. Now he just looks to me, Brad, as if he is very determined today. Uh, not that he hit, isn't always, but he had a frustrating 40-yard afternoon a week ago. He had 17 carries to make those 40 yards. But, uh, that last picture was a good example of great acceleration he has and the speed he has and how he can turn his body just to slide to a very, very narrow opening just to pick up yards that most guys would not make. First down, it's the second one in the row for the as they've taken this punt now from Pennsylvania and have moved it out to the 38-yard line from their own 13. No score. We've got 10 minutes and 30 seconds to go here in this first quarter. Penn feels very strongly that they need to stay in the game, prove for the first half that they are as good a football team as Navy, and they can accomplish that. They feel that the closer 
they get to the fourth quarter, the more they learn to the lead. They're not good enough as an Ivy League team to beat Navy. Bernie keeps on the move leg. Pennsylvania. Very good pass protection on the play. Yeah, watch this block here. Little running flake again, the misdirection. Burn gets out. That was that great block. And Smithen again comes across the field, has got just speed enough to outrun the linebacker, open for the first down. That, by the way, was Greg Gephardt, who started today at left tackle in place of George Williams, who made the block. Stopped by Fortner after gaining about two. Burn made a good uh, think that time. Uh, looked as though he may or may not give the ball to Smith. Of course he did, but that will set up the play action pass. So we've had the first penetration of the ball game. Navy in Penn territory. And here's Burn to pass. To the side. 23-yard line. Donald Wilson right on him, but Saunders, who caught a beauty for 55 yards against Dartmouth a couple of weeks ago, now puts Navy in a threatening position. 21-yard gain on the play. See the crossing breakout, and Saunders is right on the receiving end as Byrne hits him squarely in the numbers. So it's first down on the 23-yard line. As Saunders goes out wide to the left. And here is Smithen. Leading through the hole, and Chuck Smith follows him to the 20-yard line. A gain of about two or three on the play. McConnell, the leading tackler for Penn, makes the stop along with Dexter Dezier. Penn defense uh, geared to play against the run. They have not yet been able to get to the pass. Force Byrne to hurry any throws, and the Navy passing attack has been very acceptable. They've made 50 yards already throwing the football. 25 more, and he's broken the record. Nine minutes to go, first quarter, and maybe threatening here. But a good drive. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They are keying on uh, Smith, just as Air Force did a week ago, giving him no quarter. Penn defense has been very tough against the running attack all of the time. And you can see that they do get control of the line of scrimmage, even against the big, big Navy offensive line. Hard hitting, and they're stopping the runs that effectively. Usually, some of the passes are open, which has been the case for Navy thus far. Watch number 59, that's A.J. Sebastian Miller. He was in on the last time. Over the middle, it's perfect to Hollinger. Touchdown! executed play. Almost jumped on the defensive line. Burn sets. Finds Hollinger coming across the field wide open. And he's into the end zone for the score. I don't believe that Burn has missed a pass yet. And the extra point is up and good by Kandukas. And it is 7-0 in favor of Navy. And that, of course, is a cheering note for the midshipmen. Now, this is a historic note for Tony Hollinger, but his first touchdown. And Byrne drops back. He was pressured just a little bit, but had plenty of time to, again, hit Hollinger on the crossing pattern. He was tackled at the goal line, but took the ball into the end zone for the score. And it must be very, very... Uh, a happy note for Hollinger because he's a Philadelphia boy. Yeah, Burns Burn has, Burn has completed every pass he's thrown thus far. And uh, the kickoff will be handled by Sunderland. High kick going over to Chris Flynn at the 20. He's dangerous. Out to the 35, 36 yard line. Oh, you have the feeling, Bud, with watching him run, that he could go any moment. 
Well, I think he can. He's got an eight-yard average. If you've got an eight-yard average, you are a great running back. Fine drive by Navy. Ten plays, 86 yards, four minutes and 19 seconds. And the, the passing by Burns was just sensational. Kochicki on a long count. Gives it off to Comizio, goes outside, gets five and out of bounds. Good ball carrier. I know the pen is thinking uh, Navy didn't stop us the first time. We stopped ourselves with a penalty. That's what coaches are always worrying about. This is the 46th game in this series, believe it or not, that started in 1888. Nearly a hundred years ago. Second and six. Then trailing seven to nothing first quarter. Again, the short pump, and there's nobody there. The receiver, Rob Andrews, fell down at the 40-yard line. Again, the pump fake in the effort to go deep. The coaching staff felt that uh, Navy was vulnerable to that. Put a short fake and then throw the ball deep. Thus far, they were burned once when Furley interfered. The last time when the receiver fell down, there's just no way to make a judgment about the play. So it's third down. Ball on the 40-yard line up 10. Navy leading 7-0. First quarter, 7.58 to go. Checking signals and audible. Yeah, Navy reacting to it, dancing around, whooping up. There's a penalty marker down, but as you saw, John Fuller reached up and swatted the ball. Number 40. But there was a marker down on the play. Illegal motion by the offense. But there's a case where if they take the down, it would make it a fourth down situation. Yeah, I think that's what they'll do, Bill. Penn likes to audible, and when you are audibling, it's a little bit difficult always for every player to hear and to also maintain their poise and not jump offside or get a procedural penalty. And Vince McBeth makes the decision. We will take the down. Gary Tranquil. Well, that wasn't Gary, as a matter of fact. You got too much air. Here's the punt by Fosnock, taken by Furley. And he gets a couple of yards, squeezed out of it, up to about the 29-yard line. Well, the midshipmen have proven they can move the football. They went 86 yards the last time they had it. They'll take over when we come back. Bill Fleming, Bud Wilkinson, and Rick Forzano back at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium here in Annapolis. This is the first time, Bill, that uh, Penn has been behind this season. I'm sure they were not that confident they would be able to maintain that unscored on in the first half string, but it's a good defense. Their pass defense has just been a step slow. Yeah, there seems to be a very vulnerable spot over the middle that is being exploited by the midshipmen. First down, it's on the 28-yard line. Hollinger in motion. Here's Chuck Smith. Can't turn the corner, so he decides to head upfield. Rick Inskeep making the stop. Penn is a very physical defensive football team, as you can see. Every player is combative and is attacking all the time. So Mike Ray comes out. Troy Sanders goes in. And Vernon Wallace has made his appearance as a wideout. So Bill Byrne, who has been perfect in throwing today, is back to throw once again. Once more, over the middle, and it is not caught by Chuck Smith having to run backwards with Inskeep right on him. Another Rick is on the field. This one is our Rick for Zoom. Well, it looks like to me that the Pennsylvania cornerbacks are playing what I call an inside technique, and they're giving the outside patterns to the Navy receivers, so I would look for Navy to throw the ball to the down and outs on the wide receiver patterns. Well, that's kind of technical, but how would you interpret it? Well, a 
coach uh, Tony on the inside. Uh, the outside was open. That's the easiest way to do it and very clear. Third down and seven. And there he is in the middle of his intercepted right into the line. Uh, Jeff Fortner. And uh, markers all over the field. Jeff Fortna is the left outside linebacker, a senior from Fredericksburg, Pennsylvania. And he's supposed to be the best linebacker in the Ivy League. Well, I think that's a consensus opinion. Also, a Navy player was hurt on the play, and he is kneeling at the 32-yard line. It's Tim Brunn, offensive left guard, being helped to the sidelines. Mm. Locked below the knees, cost them 15. The penalties have really hurt the Quakers here. So far, they surely have, but uh, it's first and 10 and good field position following the interception. You see the interceptor, Fortner, moving downfield on the replay. Big break for the Quakers. Handed off to Comizio. He wants to prove to Chuck Smith he can run just as hard. Tripped up there by John Fuller and Vince McBeth. Well, for the first time, the ball is over on the Navy side of the 50. Comizio goes out, and we're going to see Chris Flynn. It's the first time we will have seen him in the lineup other than kickoff returns. Number 27. Tough and tight runner. A little more darting. Great. You can see that. Cuts back and falls forward to about the 46-yard line. Hit by Mark Furley. It's a great one-two punch. Uh, Comizio is one of the power runner, Flynn a guarding runner, and they play about equal time. As we mentioned to you, that's Brun, uh, who was taken off the field. We're taking a look at him with his knee. And hate to lose anybody. Third down three on the 46 of Navy. Penn trailing here, seven to nothing in the first quarter. Mizio back in, and he just grinds it for a first down. Even though he had the Navy tacklers right on his back, and he gets it down to the 42-yard line. Well, it's nice to be able to alternate to Mizio and Flynn. Everybody stretch off the time. Both of them are really dangerous. Yeah, and I think the point you make is good, too. They're so dissimilar in styles in running that the defense can't gear one for the other. And now Comizio goes out, and Flynn is in. On the first down, on the 42 and a half yard line. Navy leading, 5.27 to go in the first quarter. The score is 7 to nothing. After a nice sustained four minute drive by the midshipman. Flynn, outside, he tries to hurdle a man and there's no way to do it. And there's no place to run, uh, they all look the same. No matter how much potential skill a back has, if the line has not done their job, everybody looks alike. Curtis Irby was the one who made the stop, number 35. Second down. Finds a little bit of an opening at the 38-yard line. He's dropped by Van Hulzen. Take a check on the scores. Army and Holy Cross are playing today. And in the second quarter, Army is leading by three. And Notre Dame up on Air Force, 17-3 in the third quarter. Florida over Rutgers, 3 nothing in the first. And Boston College, 21-7 over Louisville. Camizio and Flynn are in the lineup at the same time. And nobody back, but trips formation. All four wide receivers ready to go down to quickly. And they hit it. Kenny Saunders. Kenny <laughs> Saunders breaking to the outside. And that's what Nick was talking about. Outside pattern open. And a big, big first down. Good field position now for the Quakers. Just inside the 30. Pennsylvania trailing here. 7 to nothing. but Rutman in the first quarter. Four minutes to go. First man through is Morano, the fullback. And he gets a good five yards before Vince McBeth, number 19, brings him down. And 
keep it hot, black guy. Moreno has averaged five yards per try, so this is a very explosive backfield. Tell you one thing, they certainly mix it up. We've That's seen about six different formations already in the first quarter. And they're adjusting right, which yeah, wide receiver is yeah. eligible all of the time. Wing back, tight end, tight end, wing back. That's Novoselsky trotting around there to confuse the defense. Nice hole for Chris Flynn, but Blazes, Enoch Blazes, number 75, brings him down. Injury report, uh, Rick? The bruised right knee will probably sit out the first half, maybe back the second half. That's from Red Rome or the trainer. Rick, we only got part of that. What was the name? Uh, Tim Brun, the uh, young man that went out with a knee injury oh, yeah. a moment ago. Just a bruised right knee will hold him out the first half at least. Third down and three. Ball on the 27-yard line, 23-yard line. Check that. Trip wide receivers again. No running back. And good protection. Down the middle, and it is Camizio. There was a penalty marker, however, down as Mark Furley was covering on the play. Camizio couldn't hold it. There was a marker down at the line of scrimmage, which leads us to believe it may have been offensive holding. All right, Captain. We've got a 10 yard penalty. If you take the penalty, it's going to be third down and 13. If you take the play, it's going to be fourth and three. That's a tough decision. <laughs> and I think you look to the bench now to decide what does the coach want. Uh, let's take that yardage. So it was a holding penalty, offensive holding against Penn. And the Quakers have really been hurt. <laughs> And you can see the holding penalty, number 68, and Zima. Pass is a little bit underthrown. So it's third down. And about 13. So Chikia on the screen pass. He has Comizio down to about the 24-yard line. And he stumbled just a little bit as the turf went out from under him as he tried to make his break. Had he not stumbled, he might have picked up the first down on the play. Take a look at it again. It's the screen pass set up. Kochicki dropping back, setting. Here comes the rush. He drops the ball over the rush to Comizio. He breaks up field, and now you can see him just cleats kind of went out from under him as he took his blocker who was working in front of him. And Jim Grass has gone in to try this field goal of 42 yards out of the hold of Dan McNally. Grass, one field goal in three attempts this year. This one wobbles up there, and it's good. It just did get over like a, a wounded bird. It just made it inside the left upright and just over the crossbar. So, Pennsylvania has three, and maybe has seven. to begin this second quarter of play with the ball on the 49-yard line of Pennsylvania. Navy in possession with a second down coming up and about two. And through the hole squeezes Curtis Brown by the block of John Sniffen and he gets the first down. Not much. That's enough yardage. For the key factor make the first down. If Penn can strengthen their pass defense, get a little more pressure on Byrne, a little better coverage. They did get the interception the last time he put it up, so maybe they're getting the confidence they need in their pass defense. The only touchdown in this game was scored on a pass to Tony Hollinger from Billy Byrne in the first quarter. And Byrne on a nice bootleg. Takes it short. You know, Sebastian Ellie played that well, number 59 of Pennsylvania. He actually was handling two men in there and uh, I think caused some frustration to Byrne. There he is. By the way, he has a kind of a Boz haircut. And um, I think his nickname is the Barber. Yeah, I think so. I saw him yesterday in practice and it kind of looks like a Mohawk. <laughs> Byrne was able to execute the bootleg fake very well, but no receiver turned up with it. 
Footing also, which certainly helps it. Yeah. 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 This telecast is an exclusive presentation of the Freedom Sports Network. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the Freedom Sports Network is strictly prohibited. First down on the 33 yard line. Navy protecting a four point lead here in the second quarter. to Smith and then comes back this side to Smith who makes a good catch at the 29 yard line a gain of about five on the play scooped it up it was a great reception uh, the ball was badly badly underthrown I don't know the burn slip take a look at see he delivered the ball and uh, Smith was really quite open on the play and the ball was so badly underthrown he had to reach down did make the reception, but had to go to the ground and also get the catch. And Smith cuts through that small opening, gets it down to about the 25, 24 yard line, two yards short of the first down. Lista and McConnell making the stop, 94 and 45. If you get a, just a standoff uh, with the Offensive and defensive lines, Smith is going to make four or five yards of a play because he's got that balance and quick acceleration. So about a yard to go. As far as the uh, compound, third down. 12.53 to go, first half. Smith lining up behind Curtis Brown. Follows him through and he gets the first down. Pretty good running fake that time. Uh, his Smith took the ball, Byrne went back, and again, he's doing a good job of setting up the play-action pass where he's going to fake to Smith and keep the ball, go back and throw downfield. And of course, he's thinking, let's get a turnover. Let's get a turnover. First down, on the 23-yard line. Navy leading Penn, 7-3, second quarter. Smith once again. Not much room to run. Good tackle. Brad Hippensteel. Coming out of that time, we will be taking a look at last week's dramatic highlights of the Army-Tennessee game. What a game that was as Army upset the Volunteers during that last minute of play. Hey, well, you'll see one of the best block punts in all of college football this season. You make that happen in the closing moments of the game and then make a touchdown rather than have it bounce for a safety. You've really accomplished something that is rare. Billy, uh, number 22, you saw there a moment ago munching on the grass, is eternally grateful that they never put the artificial turf in here. Second down, about seven. Ball in the corner. Hearn took no chances that time. He, he saw the uh, incoming enemy and fired it as hard as he could, but as you saw, it was way over the head of the intended receiver. And that was the first time that uh, Penn has come with the blitz. It was a cornerback blitz. Friend was wide open, coming in free. Hearn wisely got rid of the ball before he was sacked. Ron and Cornell are playing today, Harvard and Dartmouth and Columbia and Yale, so from the Ivy League, Harvard on top and Yale on top. Third down, and burn the pass once more. Soft one just off the fingertips of Mike Ray. 
very tentative on that one. I don't think he quite uh, decided how soon he wanted to get rid of the ball and should he let his receiver go a little bit further or go now and that indecision from us over and out to cause the ball to sort of fire. Bob Mish has gone into hold and uh, Fendus will try this uh, field goal. This will be about 37 yards into the win. Fondukas has a fairly strong leg, though. Now he's got plenty of it. And it is good. So Ted Fondukas makes his first field goal. And the score is now maybe 10, 10-3. Ten well, the Plebes are anxious to do 10 here giving the Navy a seven-point lead. Rick Farzano has something. Well, I was just behind the uh, Pennsylvania... Uh, I was just behind the uh, Pennsylvania bench, and I believe that uh, field goal is just giving Pennsylvania a little bit more confidence that they can stop this Navy football team. And one other thing, Pennsylvania brought 103 players and had them all dressed, so they're going to try to outnumber Navy, if nothing else. You need to tell me the guy is going to wear 101, 102, 102. <laughs> He'll wear anything if he can dress for a varsity football game. Here's the kick by Summers of Iowa. And once again, Chris Flynn with the 17. We got to belt him. He wiggles away from people. <laughs> great determination and also great violence. A set of legs. And the Navy scoring drive, 16 plays, moved 62 yards. It's a good drive, 5 minutes and 27 seconds to the field goal. Yeah, all of the scoring drives have been either 4 minutes or longer. Nothing quick has happened. I believe, uh, to follow up on what Rick said about 100 and some players, I believe the Ivy League has a restriction. You can only take, what, uh, 50 or 60, whatever it is. So this not being an Ivy League game, it gives them an opportunity to take as many as they can. And it's the one game a year that they can do that. Comizio getting a couple of yards up to about the 34-yard line. And it's a great thing for the squad morale. When everybody gets to call the trip, everybody feels closer and more a part of the total action. 10 to 3 is the score. We have 10 minutes and 52 seconds to go in this first half. And Adam yeah. can avoid the penalties, Bill. I think they can move the football. Well, Chikia fires it in there. It is complete to Novoselsky, the tight end. You know, it's funny, but the uh, Pennsylvania touchdown passes have all been to tight ends this year. And their tight ends are excellent football players, and tight ends really are the most overlooked receivers because most defenses are geared to handle the wide receivers. <laughs> Penn uses them very wisely and very well. Well, it's going to hurt them here, though, because there's another holding penalty against the Quakers. And the penalties have just killed Penn. It's their fifth penalty. Ball goes all the way back to the 24. You know, I'll shake your head and wonder if penalties really come from over-exuberance most of the time. Well, Chris Flynn didn't fool maybe, but there again goes a penalty marker into the fray. We might have a face mask here. Didn't seem like there was anybody else around, Flynn. Vince Macbeth made the stop. Well, it's going to be against Penn once again. Vince Macbeth, fine linebacker of Navy, a senior from Camden, Arkansas, number 19. Yeah, that's two in a row. This time they're going to refuse the penalty, however. Now makes it third down and about 13. Pennsylvania's trailing here, 10 to 3. Navy hoping up, hoping to even this series. As I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, show, 
21 wins for Penn, 20 for Navy, four ties. To the sidelines. Oh, a beautiful catch at the 45 yard line. Tom Joyce on the receiving end. Great throw by Kochikia. Joyce was only a step ahead of the receiver. We see Kochikia drilling the ball to the outside. Just one step Joyce has, but he also had body position. He had his body between the ball and the defender. 19 yards on the play, and that was Mark Kiefer right on his back. Nothing makes you feel as good as overcoming a 10-yard penalty. Bruce Bowen follows his blocker, leads his way, and fights his way across the field to the 49-yard line. Mike Heron, number 10, eventually having to make the stop on it. And when you overcome the penalty to make the first down, that truly builds confidence. And that's what this Penn team needs. Let's take a short pause here for station identification. This is the Freedom Football Network. Well, you can see why Chris Flynn is leading the Ivy League in rushing, because uh, he just picked up seven yards, and he'd swear he only got three or four. Very deceptive. Good faking. But unfortunately, the pass by Kochicki is overthrown. Tom Joyce was the intended receiver. So it's third down and about two and a half to three yards. And I would guess with either uh, Comizio or with Flynn, the three yards would not be that difficult, Bud. Well, well Stefanon did a beautiful job of covering that pass. He ignored the play action, stayed right with the receiver, and now we get that big third down. And the ball is given to Flynn. Well, he twists, and I think that last twist may have given him the first down. That motion man that you see going across just before the snap, then changing direction, changes the support factors in the defensive secondary. He made it by a foot. Did you notice there, Novoselsky holding on to the uh, hand of Chris Flynn? That's unity. <laughs> Misdirection, and Flynn keeps on grinding to the 40. Now five good ball carrier. You bet, a very good ball carrier. Perfect balance and great leg drive. Gets the handoff. This direction play. Look at his eyes as he sees everybody in the secondary and then has strength and power enough in the legs to fight through the tackles. He leads the team in scoring with 30 points. And as Bud mentioned, an eight yard per play ever. Here's Kochikia. Good. I was going to say good protection, but he fired it over the head of the intended receiver, Ed Solari. Good protection, but Lane, he also had marvelous pass defense. Everybody covered. So it's now third down and five. Tom Joyce reports into the lineup. Penn is getting a good balance of pass run. They've hit the passes uh, not as consistently as their running game has gone, but the balance will keep the Navy defense unsettled. They're not quite within field goal range here. The ball is on the 40, so it's a third and five. No remaining backs. And this ball is batted down before it can get loose, and it's caught by Fuller before it hits the ground. It's a remarkable play. <laughs> great reflexes, great reaction. Let's see who bats it. Van Hulzen, I think you'll find 85. Back throwing, and bingo, there you are. And then Fuller has the presence to see the ball bouncing, get his hands underneath it, and make the interception before the ball can hit the ground. How about that tackle by Krochikia? <laughs> the quarterback came in and made a dandy. Back in just a moment. Pennsylvania is sending Chris Flynn back as a single safety. And 
and Buick will be punished. I mention that because Flynn is a very dangerous runner. He's getting a little daylight. Yeah, just give him a couple of yards. Buick knows that. It's a very high kick. There'll be no return here. And he takes it to the 23-yard line. So well, Pennsylvania will go to work, and but I think uh, your point is well taken that once again, Penn's defense has stopped Navy for some the point. The only thing that's looked weak about the defense and uh, the early drives of Navy, Byrne was able to find pass receivers open all the time. The rushing defense has been excellent. There's a good look at our crowd here today. A big weekend in Annapolis. The boat show is here in this game between Penn and Navy. Here's Alano, the fullback, getting a couple of yards out to about the 27 and 28 yard line. Six minutes, 23 seconds to go in this first half. 10 to 3 Navy. It's been a hard fought first half. Penn keeps changing their formations. Anytime it's long yardage, they have gone with no running back in the backfield. They put three wide receivers out to one side and a split end out to the other. And now they have split backs with Chris Flynn in there. And he gets the ball as he goes outside. Good defensive play, however, by Curtis Furby, number 35. One man uh, just doesn't bring Flynn down. He can slow him down, but it's very hard to bring him down. Third down coming up. Well, we've given credit to the uh, Penn defense for stopping Navy. Let's give credit to this Navy defense for holding Penn to only three points. Penn's a pretty good scoring machine. Third and five. Now check you uh, down the center. Ooh, right off the fingertips of Bruni. And uh, I think he felt that one because Kiefer was right there to belt it. Pass was almost on target. Just a step too long and that of course kept the completion from taking place and a quick shift by the punting team by Penn fourth down Fosnock will be booting it about from the 20 high kick forcing Furley back to 23 well, he did a pretty good job on his own up to the 32-yard line before the avalanche comes. 47-yard boot by Fosnock. And with 4.57 to go in the first half, we'll take this time out. Gary Tranquil, the Navy coach here on the sidelines, 46 years old in his fifth year. He's a graduate of Wittenberg, where he was an outstanding quarterback, according to Rick Verzano. He was the most uh, valuable player in 1960 in the Ohio Conference. Chuck Smith missed, and he gets that extra three or four yards. Dexter Desir and Mike Lista on the stop. And the penetration was there, but he's a hard man to hit square enough to stop him when the first man is clear to get the shot. Looks like uh, Brown is going to the locker room on uh, a leg or ankle or knee or whatever that uh, doesn't look like it's very serviceable for the rest of the afternoon. Good taking by Byrne, but uh, it looks like Mike Ray might have been held up by Donald Wilson, number 21, because it was a flag over there in that area. Wilson's protesting it violently. He's entitled to give him one shot. Remember he said, uh, you held him, you just didn't give him a shot. <laughs> well, maybe we could see it on the replay. Guess not. Comes up to the 45-yard line. Well, penalties have hurt the, the Quakers, there's no doubt about that. They had him in a long yardage situation had they not had the penalty called. But that, I think, is the seventh penalty that Penn has had thus far. Wrong. Five according to the statistician. Well, 60 yards is the big thing. <laughs> on the 45, first and 10. Burn on the end of the round. Troy Saunders coming, and he has two blockers. Well, 
Say one thing, Fangmeyer played it as well as you could play it defensively. Number 29, he got loose of his man and forced the play inside. Gain of about, uh, let us say, well, before he stepped out, I guess he got nine yards. But as you saw, there was nothing on the play. And that will nullify any nine yard gain. Very difficult when you have that outside field position closing when the man is coming around deep as you do on a deep reverse not to take the shot when you know you really shouldn't here's, here's the man that's going to get it Fangmeyer mm -hmm. he only gets a right ball which is behind on the left side of the screen but uh, there are so many people changing direction on a deep reverse that even the offensive locker knows he shouldn't clip the, the temptation remains awfully high 3.55 to go in this second quarter. Maybe hanging on to a 10-3 lead. Nice quick opener as Curtis Brown, the fullback, gets it all the way up to midfield. And once again, a marker goes into the play of David Smith and James Angmeyer, 38 and 29, bringing down. They're short of a first down, but there may be more coming. Beautiful trap play. Brown found a big hole, and he's got... Outstanding speed, averaging 5.6 yards per carry. And when he gets that kind of a start, that kind of quickness, he's a dangerous man. Bruce McConnell was the man who was guilty. You saw him there on the replay, number 45. The uh, ball carrier, Brown, was clearly down, and he just came uh, out of nowhere, it seemed, and pounced on him, and that really was cost 15 yards down to the 35. Running to the end of the half, and that 15 yard penalty gives maybe one this field position as they swing it out to Smith. And Smith is forced out of bounds by Donald Wilson at about the 20, I'm going to call it the 28 yard line, marked at the 27. This is the sweep pass, uh, Navy calls it. Smith just rolls it out. They throw the ball out there, and it gets there a little quicker than. Smith can run with the ball, and it's a difficult play to have the defense able to cover the perimeter. Gain of eight on the play, second down and two. The ball up the 27-yard line. First down. Just inside the 25. Sebastian Ellie forcing him out of bounds, number 59 there. Give him short yardage, and Smith is very difficult to stop, keep from making the first down. Well, the thing I like about him is that he's got such speed to go outside. He's just, uh, he is a very strong one. Is he? He's got, he's more dangerous really out there. He's got as good acceleration, Bill, as any back that I've seen in a long time. He can really like that afterburner. First and 10, just inside the 25. Now he goes inside and finds that little hole. Wedges it down to about the 17-yard line. The list that brings him down. I think you can see that Blitz was on. Penn is expecting a pass. And when you're blitzing, you don't have any pursuit. If you don't make that first tackle, there isn't going to be the swarming of the defensive linebackers in secondary because they are really rushing the passer. Second and one. The ball is on the 16-yard line. Two minutes and 49 seconds to go. Second quarter. Navy leading 7-3. Curtis Brown, the fullback, gets the first down. That quick play trap. In place of McKenna today, who uh, was injured in the Air Force game. And so uh, his backup will be the sophomore, Pat Donald. Brown's played well. He's blocked well, too. First down on the, uh, well, we're going to call it the 11 and a half yard line. Mike Ray out wide to the right. Change the direction that the footing wasn't there for Chuck Smith and David Smith. Number 38, sophomore out of Shelton, Connecticut, brings him down. Very good defensive call. Had everybody coming. The ball was not put in the air. Smith had no room to run. One thing, the ball is directly in front of the uprights, but it's only second down. So a couple of more shots here, and Navy may very well elect to go from the field goal. They did the last time and made it 10-3. Burn to the 
little bit of pressure, lobs it too far into the end zone, and Smithen, that little bit of pressure, it was the key on the play. He earned it, did not have time to put the receiver clear, had to put the ball in the air before he was open. Third down. And considering where the ball is on the field, I would rather imagine they'll either run it up the middle or try another pass play to keep it in position for the field goal kick. Third and 12. Bill Burns, senior quarterback of the of California. Over the middle, he's got Mike Ray at the five, but it's not enough. It's fourth down and three. And the question is, do you go for the first down on fourth down, or do you go for what could be an easy three? Well, the blitz was on again, but Ray was the hot receiver. When the blitz is coming, the short man is always open, as Ray was that time. He picked up the completed pass on the play, but uh, not enough yardage for the first down, and the field goal unit is on. Ted Fundukas, who has a 37-yarder to his credit. We'll try this one from 22. It's good. And with one minute and six seconds to go in this first half, Navy has now gone up 13 to three. Two field goals by Ted Fundukas. It's not a, uh, a great lead. I think that uh, Navy was confident they'd have a bigger lead at this point in time. And and if they can get over the penalties, penalty penalties has just destroyed their offensive attack. They've also had some costly penalties on defense. But if they can get over the penalty situation in the second half, they can still be a factor in the game. Now, you made a point, though, however, uh, Bud, earlier. You said that Penn was coming in, you'd, you'd seen the team and everything, and they, they looked mean and aggressive and everything. Uh, maybe this is just simply a manifestation of that. They, they won it so badly. I think that's true. Uh, penalties uh, really just from over exuberance uh, no one deliberately is breaking any rules ever but you're trying so hard and in the game of combat uh, you can exceed what is allowed coming up at halftime we will present our weekly feature on the academy experience and this week a rather interesting subject yard patrol at annapolis well, well start my neighborhood though, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> It started out to be a rather sunny day, but now with this uh, overcast, it's uh, gotten uh, rather cloudy. Ball was kicked out of bounds. That'll be a five-yard violation. And maybe we'll kick again from the 30. Well, the Blues are out now. As you know, we were here two weeks ago in very warm weather, and the Navy Whites were on, but then the uh, seasons changed, and so did the uniforms. Very impressive. Whether they're in blue or in white. Uh, particularly the marching. Uh, you hear the drum and bugle corps, and then you look over toward the campus, and here they come. Sunderland will do the booting here. I, the question is, will, will he try the onside kick, or will he just kick it away? Uh, may not be um, all the uh, strategy in the world, because I think what he really would like to do is keep it out of the wind. Try to keep it low. It's a much more drastic penalty than it used to be. When the ball is kicked from the 35-yard line, and then you get the five-yard penalty for kicking out of bounds, you're kicking from the 30, and that almost guarantees excellent field position for the receiving team. Flynn and Bruni are back. They're checking with the sideline official, who is the official uh, timekeeper. Apparently, there's something wrong with the scoreboard clock. It says 104, and we have no idea whether that's too much or too little. The score is right, 13 to 3 on the scoreboard. Navy out in front by 10 over a stubborn Pennsylvania team here in this first half. You know, a very low kick, and it's picked up by one of the short men and pushes it back to Chris Finn. Well, you're going to pitch it to somebody. He's the guy to pitch it to. I think the strategy was excellent, but the execution just didn't follow through. See, one of the short men will catch the kick here in the bounce. He tosses it back to Flynn, and Flynn took his eyes off the ball. The execution was pretty good. It was a fumble by Flynn that failed to complete the pass. Let's not hold Alexic guilty. Uh, This time, 
trying to go outside was not the wisest move by Flynn. Number 76 there. That was Troy Holland and John Fuller in on the tackle. The scoring drive was climaxed by that 22-yard field goal by Fundu. Here we go. Ten fields all very good, but we didn't let him score a touchdown. We forced him to kick a field goal again. Twice in a row that's happened. Flynn Steigers to the 26-yard line. Clock moving, 25 seconds to go in the first half. Troy Holland once again in on the stop. Navy's been very impressive defensively. Been difficult for the Penn offense to get on track with any consistency. And the clock has stopped now with 13 seconds to go as Jim Krochikia, the senior quarterback from Pennsylvania, will go over to talk to Ed Zubrow. Gives us a chance to look at a well, one of the youngest coaches in America today in major college football. Zubra's only 35 years old. This is his first year as head coach, and he has his team going into this game. Maybe, of course, taking the time out, hoping that they can force Penn to check and get the ball again before the half runs out. Jim Kochikio. Went to Holy Cross High School in South Erie, Connecticut. Doesn't run much, but he has a 52% completion rate. He's only had one interception, you know, that's not bad. He's also very good on the rollout passes and the bootleg. He hasn't uh, done that very much thus far, but in the second half, I look for him to start using the sprint out pass and the bootleg. Third down, 15 seconds to go. Maybe the final play of the first half. Again, the short pump, and he goes deep to three men out of there, and one of them comes down with the football. It was intended for Brent Novoselsky, and it's Mark Foley, I believe, who was intended for the interception. There he is, number 41. That ends the first. Well, wait a second now. It doesn't end it. There's a marker down. And Troy Holland has gotten into it with one of the Penn players, number 70, 77, Scott Ernst. Well, Holland will tip the scales at 235 and Ernst about 260. <laughs> Both heavyweights. Good match. That is going to be against Pennsylvania. And and he's another out penalty, there. another penalty. Well, but did you see the thumb? Yep. That means Scott Ernst will not be with us for the rest of the afternoon. A senior from Tiverton, Rhode Island at uh, the offensive left tackle spot. So Sheftick, Jeff Sheftick, number 66, will be in there in his place. So we still have six seconds to go in this first half. Ed Zubra and that blue shirt over there on the sidelines pacing up and down. He doesn't like that at all. The team needs to, between halves, get some poise, talk about what penalties have cost them in the first half, and then resolve that we aren't going to commit any infractions in the second half. 90 yards already. So Bernie's going to go to the air here on what looks like could be the last play of the half. He's out of bounds at the 24-yard line, Mike Ray, but the clock has run out in his first half after a fine reception by this young man who scored the only touchdown for Navy against Air Force last week. So the players get a good round of applause from the fans here at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. It's been a hard fought and a rather tenacious first half. And Navy leading 13-3 to as the smoke clears there. Can we find our colleague Rick Frizzano on the field? Again. Gary Tranquil, the head coach at Navy. Gary, the only ones that think that there's easy, easy football games are the alumni. <laughs> Your thoughts on the first half? Well, I don't think we played particularly well. Offensively, again, we've had our problems, Rick. Uh, defensively, we've played decently. But uh, you're right, there aren't any easy football games. You've got to be ready to play every week. Good luck in the second Thank half, you. Gary. All right, Rick. So Navy leads it by the score of 13 to 3. The midshipmen have proven one thing, that they are not thinking too much about what happened last week. They're thinking about Pennsylvania, and well, they should. I doubt if the Quakers feel they're out of it. Not at all. Uh, the 
field of yards, maybe he's had almost twice as many. But the key factor are the penalties, and as you can see, Navy 3 of 35 and 7 for 90 uh, against Penn. Penn has got to get out of that penalty situation. Time of possession almost even, and that usually is the key related to how well the teams are matched. So as we mentioned, the halftime score, 13 to 3. It's Davy over Penn, and we'll be back with more halftime activities in just a moment. In Annapolis, and Pennsylvania will receive the football. It means that Jim Crochia will Crochicki will be at the quarterback spot, Comizio, Lorano, and Saunders, but with the report on Comizio, it looks like Chris Flynn, who is there at the top of your picture to receive the ball, may very well stay in the lineup. He's there with Bruni, number 42. And here is Sunderland. And the second half is underway. Flynn at the 13. Snag at the 31 yard line. Number 44, Dan Snyder, in on the stop from the specialty team. So let's set this lineup for you. The uh, Quakers going offensively. Andrews will be one wide receiver. Brent Novoselsky will be the tight end. Ernst has been ejected from the game, so that means that Sheftick will start a tackle. But Wilkins, Donato, Panzini, and Peterson up front. Kochicki, the quarterback. As Novoselsky screens over to the left side. And Flynn, as mentioned, starting in place of Comizio, gets a couple of yards. Defensively for Navy, we have Murray Cook, Bob Plants, Enoch Blazes, Troy Holland, and Chad Van Holzen up front. Macbeth and Doman, the two prime linebackers. Then stepping on Keeper, Fairley, and Heron. Matt, uh, maybe defensive team, Bill, has 10 seniors in the starting lineup, so that's great experience. Second and two, ball in the 32-yard line. The Chickia, ball is cobbled by Green. Have not been able to hit consistently with their passing attack. Their running attack looks to be good as we see an injured player down on the hand the fellow who just caught the ball. Trying to catch it, but bound at the moment that he was trying to make the reception. Take a look at the pass again. And you can see the leg he hit and turned firmly and ooh, I feel that hurts. Hope it's not a serious injury. Well, so he's shaking it off very well. Third down. Third and nine. Time today that a pass has been batted by a Navy interior lineman. Kent Van Horn has been the one assigned to do that, and I guess he's got the size of hands that can do it. And it's a 6'3, 205 pound quarterback for Chippewa, so he's not short. Pennsylvania going quickly with Fosnacht, the punter going in without a huddle. Furley's back for Navy. Another desultory rush. Ooh. I did not see the fair catch called for, but I don't think that uh, he did signal fair catch. Yeah, you know, he's fair game if, uh, if he didn't, but the flag went in. Man, then they didn't give him room enough to have to give the man receiving the punt one full yard. That's what it was. Interference with the opportunity to catch it, and even though he caught it, there's still going to be another penalty chalked off against the so-called peaceful Quakers. <laughs> they were not playing that way. They had seven penalties for 90 yards in the first half, and they opened the second half with a penalty. A couple of scores coming in. I know you're interested in the Army Holy Cross game. Holy Cross ahead of Army in the second quarter. 
which goes to Chuck Smith. Tries the short side of the field and has one of his few fumbles. He fumbled the ball and Bruce McConnell, number 45, came up with it to give Pennsylvania the ball. Now talk about a change in momentum. Smith hits the ball cleanly, but he is really hit. Number 94 drove his fist through the ball, caused the fumble, and it's a great turnover for Penn. You know, Chuck Smith prides himself in not fumbling. He has very, very strong hands and arms, but, you know, if you get the ball just right, you can knock that uh, spheroid out of there. First down. He's taken by Kochicki, and he goes long. A little too long. Scungio, number 81, senior from Abington, Maryland, was the intended receiver. More scores, Air Force getting uh, its lumps today. 31 to 3 from Notre Dame in the fourth quarter. Pretty tight game in the third with Rutgers. Army's opponent next week, Boston College, bombing Louisville in the fourth. Ivy League, Cornell over Brown. over to the opposite side. Second down, 10. And trailing, score 13 to the Flynn playing in place of uh, Rich Camizio, and I think we may have a report on uh, Camizio's condition. Rick Rosano? Well, I watched uh, Rich Camizio run on the sideline. He has a pulled hamstring. He wants to get in the ball game, but he was running like it was awfully tender. I just don't know if we'll see him back in this football game today. Well, we hate to have you on the injury uh, brigade here, but we have a, a Chad Van Hosen is down for Navy. A fine defensive end who has really played well today, and uh, Red Romo is out there looking at him. Uh, uh, Tom, I'm going to go check him out. Okay. Go ahead. Kochicki's really had his uh, problems throwing the ball today. He's only four of 15 passes for 56 yards, and he's thrown two interceptions. So the Navy secondary is having a fine defensive football game. Kochicki having trouble completing his passes to balance up the offense. Now, I would think that would be rather critical to Penn. If you're going to get uh, Flynn outside or Camisio inside, you've really got to open things up. It's been very obvious that once... Either Flynn or Camisio has had the ball. There have been three or four Navy men right on him. Third down. Straight hand off to Lorano, the fullback from Revere, Massachusetts. Doesn't carry a lot, but on this particular one, he got nine quick yards. And everybody in the Navy team was thinking pass. <laughs> As you mentioned a moment ago, when you get everybody thinking the wrong thing, Offense has got an opportunity. Well, I don't know. Decision time. Fourth down in about a foot. But Penn decides to go without a huddle and sends the kicking team in. Posnock. His long is 47 yards this year. This one he floats high and Furley inside the 10 will take the ball at the 8-yard line. And that's where Navy will take over. 12 minutes, 33 seconds to go in this third quarter. 35-yard boot. Navy still leads it by 10. On the sideline is number 85. Navy's fine defensive right end, Chad Van Halsen, the senior from Sydney, Minnesota. And uh, they're attending to that left knee or leg. I don't know if the uh, lady came out. Doesn't look like he will get back in, but we'll get a report from Ray. First down and 10 on the 8-yard line. Navy trying to protect here at 10 point lead is Chuck Smith gets it out to about the 10. Brad Heinz, the co-captain rover, wins him down, number 46. Navy stays tough uh, with the running defense. Uh, running, uh, Navy passing has been a key factor in his lead that they presently hold. Now up to uh, the 10. Defensive alignment by Penn. And Byrne in his end zone being chased. Just throws it away. Sebastian Alley, number 59, ball hawking him in there. He did have a, uh, we can see Van Hosen walking here, but 
Byrne was able to throw one in the vicinity of the receiver, so it was not an intentional grounding. Let's take a, a short pause here for station identification. This is the Freedom Football Network. Third down, about eight. They stopped and here the decision to punt will prove to have been wise. Burn. Oh, this one is stabbed by Fangmeyer. Fangmeyer still on his feet at the 15-yard line. His progress was stopped. That is the second one that they picked off today, and McGoldrick had to bring him down. Fangmeyer, a senior from Rockville, Maryland, 16-yard return. Burn is not pressured too much, but he throws a little bit too quickly. The receiver was breaking behind Frank Burn, but uh, he came up, read the throw very well, was closing on the ball to make the interception, and when you underthrow it, those things always happen. Van Halsen has gone back in the game. Number 85, that defensive right end for Navy. And off to Flynn. Flynn is snagged by Van Horn, number 73. I'll tell you now, when you watch this interception again, just watch the great dive that the Navy uh, receiver makes. <laughs> he makes it. Okay, that's There's no pressure. But the ball is thrown too quickly. Great recovery. And the defensive secondary all reacted beautifully to it. It's an interception, and we changed from a defensive team to an offensive team. And Bruni gallops to about the nine. Now, this could make a heck of a difference I mean, everything in this third quarter with plenty of time to go. Should Pennsylvania score to make it 13 to 10, it would get a bit more tense for Navy. And again, that conference factor that we've been talking about all afternoon would be building from 10. Third down. Third and three. Gets to about the eight. I'd say he's about a yard and a half short. A good misdirection play, however. Maybe he was unsettled just enough to open up a slight bit of daylight, and now it's decision time. I think uh, they're just going to say, come on, let's try to get it in there for the first down. When you're behind 13 to three, that's the proper decision. So Troy Holland, number 76, reports into the lineup. And Zuno is going to look at this one very closely. Zubrow, the 35-year-old coach of Pennsylvania. Look at this. The tricky at a pass. He has a man open in the end zone. Touchdown! Novoselsky in the end zone. But there is a marker down at the line of scrimmage. So let's see what it is. Could be nullified. Beautiful, courageous call when you bring that fourth and one. You're always slightly fearful of putting the ball in the air, but they made the beautiful play action and it worked. And we're getting the decision now of the officials, and I believe the touchdown is going to stand. Vincent Price. Touchdown is counted. So the personal foul will take effect on the kickoff, and Pennsylvania will be kicking from midfield, which was another break. About time they break on penalties, isn't it? And that was a big one. And they, again, marvelous execution of that uh, play action pass. Receiver wide open in the end zone. Maybe looking for them to try to make the fourth and less than a yard. Here's Jim Grass's drive for fourth. It's good. And it's a 13 to 10 ball game. So that score is triggered by a fine interception by Fangmeyer, leading to seven points. Can you believe it? Fourth and one, and they did this play. Well, it's beautiful play action faking. They fake the fullback one way, the tailback the other way, so you have total misdirection. Navy totally supporting the run, trying to keep the 
first down from being made to let themselves vulnerable to the touchdown pass. Great play action. And the penalty for roughness after the play has the kickoff team kicking it from the 50-yard line, which means they ought to be able to put it into the end zone and awfully close there, too. That was Novoselsky's third touchdown of the year. Wallace is back along with Chuck Smith. Grass hopes to kick it very, very high. <laughs> Instead of that, he moves it right downfield. Vernon Wallace gets it out to the 27-yard line. And it looked like uh, the Pennsylvania team defensively is saying, boy, I'll tell you one thing, that seven points did a lot for us. Very good return when you're kicking from the 50-yard line and they get it out to the 27. That's excellent performance by the special team. First down. And maybe thinking, we got to make something happen here. We can't turn the ball over again to this inspired Penn team. Shortland. And Brown, the fullback, gets it out to about the 20, uh, 38 yard line. 11 yards. This gives you some idea of Brown's great athletic running ability. Byrne pops the ball to him and watch him slip this first tackle. Almost <laughs> kept his balance. It's again on the replay. And Chuck Smith gets it forward uh, up to about the 42. And the scoring drive after the interception, when you're that close to the goal line, it really helps you. Four plays, 16 yards, but the key play, the play action pass with less than a yard to go on fourth down. What that does not show is Krangmeyer's interception. That was the big play that set it up. Second down, five. 8.40 to go, third quarter. Chuck Smith. You know, Chuck's been running to the short side of the field an awful lot today. And you, you wonder what would happen if he ran to the wide side because he does have good sprinter speed. That last play was, uh, again, one of the marvelous examples of the talent of this ball carrier, Chuck Smith. Enough for the first down. Right at midfield. Rick, do you have something? The only thing that worries me about Chuck Smith is when he goes to his right, he carries the ball in his left hand, and you can fumble the ball doing that. Well, he did before, you remember? Yes, sir. Well, he only got two out of it. His forward progress stopped by Fortner. And we really feel that maybe is getting ready to put the ball in the air again because the Penn defense is closing very quickly on the running plays. That's as about as slow as Chuck Smith has ever gotten up from the tackle. And I watched him when he walked back, bud, and he had just a slight limp. He'd never let anybody know unless the leg was broken. <laughs> Second down and nine. Pass to Smith. And he's belted at the about the 37 yard line. First down for Navy. You get the ball to Smith in an open field where he's in a one on one situation and it's almost a mismatch. Learn drops back. Find Smith running a little curl pattern. Smith is wide open and now it's one on one in the open field and he can always pick up extra yardage. Taking lessons from Billy, number 22. Oh, he's butt heads today with a lot of defenders. And once again, Smith carries. Lister brings him down inside the 35. It's a 13 to 10 game. Navy uh, holding on to a three point lead here in the third quarter. We have 6.55 to go in it. And you can watch the changing patterns of the Penn defense as the Navy team breaks the huddles and comes up to the ball. They're sometimes in a 3-2 in set, but often they have six men on the line of scrimmage taking on each of the Navy offensive linemen individually. And here they're in that pattern again. Bollinger in motion. 
of protection, and he goes to Hollinger, and it is tipped. Oh, that one was almost picked off by Donald Wilson. In the fourth quarter, Holy Cross and Army are tied at 14 now. Notre Dame defeated Air Force 31 to 3. Florida over Rutgers 15 to 3. And a final, Boston College 41, Louisville 7. Boston College is getting better as the season goes along. And we'll be testing Army. That'll be November the 1st. You'll see that game from Mikey Stadium. Third down. Here's Chuck Smith with some running room, but it closes up on him. David Smith, number 38, and Bruce McConnell, number 45, making the stop on him. We'd like to welcome stations WXLI-TV in Minneapolis and WCIV-TV in Charleston, South Carolina to our Freedom Football Network today. Fourth down for Navy. And they're out of field goal range, so the, that was a very fine stand after they'd made three successive first downs by the Penn defense. Hey, look at this. I mean, maybe they're going <laughs> to go for something else. We're getting that field goal attempt. And yeah, that's Sunderland. a long one. Well, Sunderland made one uh, 40 yards against uh, Air Force. Let's go. 50 yards, but there's a marker down. Oh, boy, what a tough penalty. We talked about the penalties for Penn. When you get a penalty after a 50-yard field goal, that takes three points off the board and moves the kicker back five more yards. You wonder if he'll try it again. I, I think I misspoke. I said against Air Force. It was against Dartmouth that he got that long one. Well, there's not going to even try this time. Newick has gone into punt. Very tranquil there on the sidelines. That makes you shake your head when you're coaching. Well, you're you. wondering, you know, what the procedure was. Probably a lineman just lifting it. New again is it over toward the sideline. It is hit, picked up, and it is going to be down on the seven-yard line. Chris Flynn has the ball for uh, Penn, but that puts the Quakers in a rather deep spot here with 5.24 to go in the third. Rick Verzano was right down in the end zone. Rick, we're watching the uh, replay of this. How did you see it? Well, I see it as an illegal touch by the Navy man. He was the end zone when he touched the ball on about the one-yard line, which means the ball should go about to the 20-yard uh, line as a touchback. You could definitely see that his foot was, uh, I mean, he had gone into the end zone, and when he touched it, he legally was in the end zone. Well, whatever it was, it was a pretty smart play by, by Flynn to pick it up. The way the decision worked out. If Flynn fumbles the ball after it's been touched, it can go back to that spot. Flynn gets it up to about the 12-yard line. I mentioned earlier that Smith was, was uh, limping a little bit when he went back, and, and he was favoring the left leg or left ankle, and I still think he is. You might ask him, Rick. Okay. He's a hard man to keep out of the game. Oh, as I said, unless it's broken, you bet. And then he might play for a quarter. I remember doing a, a soccer match once uh, with, a, with a player with a broken leg, and he played almost 20 minutes. Sounds hard to believe, but... It does happen with some athletes. 4.47 to go in the third. Nice hole opens up in the middle for Tom Clark, the fullback, playing in place of Lorano. He gets it pretty close to a first down. Well, that was the same backfield faking as the play-action pass that scored the touchdown for Penn a few moments ago. Third down in about a yard and a half. Let's call it two. It's a 10 for Penn, a 13 for Navy game. We're all six to go in the third. Well, Chickia gives it off to Flynn. I'll tell you, there was sheer effort. He was only about six inches off the ground as he got those last two yards. First down. He's a very determined runner. And he also has that ability to stop and start without losing any forward speed. Four minutes to go, third. And a first and ten. Well, this is where Pennsylvania should have started. 
But on that punt that uh, was illegally touched, it was not uh, caught by the officials, so Pennsylvania's had to make these 13 yards the hard way. The trickiest pass out of bounds. Again, beautiful pass defense, great coverage. Solari was the intended receiver. I gave you that final a moment ago, 31 to three, Notre Dame over Air Force. Florida final, beating Rutgers 15 to three. Rutgers will be Army's opponent next week. Boston College over Louisville, 41 to seven. Uh, Flynn once again gets it up to about the 24 yard line. Cloud cover starting to move out a little bit as we get some sunshine. It's been a very pleasant day though. I guess you judge everything by comparison and compare it to a week ago. <laughs> very simple. <laughs> Flynn is really a clever runner. Great balance and that ability to stop, change direction, and then accelerate. Third down. And seven. On count by Krochikia. Checking signals. Well, he checked them right into Van Horn. Maybe expecting pass was blitzing, and when everybody's blitzing, there very seldom is any lane open. Georgia Tech and Auburn uh, playing today. Auburn at the half, leading Georgia Tech 17 to three. Georgia over Vanderbilt in a final. And Iowa leading Michigan 10 to three in the first quarter at Ann Arbor. Bosnock. It's a high spiral floating down to Furley at the 37. Great kick coverage. There's Ed Zubrow on the sidelines, this uh, young coach of Pennsylvania, a 73 graduate of Haverford College. He's a native Philadelphian who came to Penn as an assistant under Jerry Burnt in 1981, serving as the defensive uh, line coach. Also, he was the recruiting coordinator up until last January when Burnt went on to Rice as the head coach. And he has uh, given much of the credit for Penn's four straight Ivy League championships. It's a, a strong defense, did it? Here's Chuck Smith. Getting down to the 45-yard line, and so with a 15-yard gain on that one, it doesn't look like he was uh, too hurt, although you do see him limping a little. This is that pass sweep again. Smith just takes off from the outside, and the ball is thrown to him, which gets the ball wider quicker than you would on an ordinary handoff to the tailback. On the 46, 153 to go in the third quarter. Navy leading by three. Nice quick opener to Curtis Brown. Look at him dance around and he's pulled down from behind. Seeping in there is Brad Hippensteel. He was able to get him collared at the 25 after a 21-yard game. We talk so much about Chuck Smith and uh, what a great ball carrier he is, but Brown is in the same class. He's averaging 5.6 yards, and he's got that explosive start that gets him past the line of scrimmage when he gets a little opening and is there so quickly that he has passed the linebackers before they have a chance to read and recover. First down on the 25. There's Chuck Smith. Well, he just barrels it to the 13-yard line. Punishing Fangmeyer on the tackle. And the Navy line beginning to take control. These last holes have been open beautifully, and Smith and Brown have just taken the openings, and when you give those two backs openings, they're going to pick up big yardage. 13 on that one. First down on the 12. Smith again. He breaks loose and goes in the score. That proves the old theory. You better grab him by the ankles or you'll never bring him down. He's got great body position when he's carrying the ball. He's low, his shoulders. As we take a look at Smith popping in, 
keeping his body square, having enough leg drive balance to just run through the safety man coming up to make the tackle and to go into the end zone standing up. So Fundukas will try the extra point. It's 19 to 10 now in favor of Navy. And that makes it 20. 56 seconds to go in the third quarter. And once again, the cannon is fired. Well, any thought we had that Chuck Smith might be favoring that ankle or leg <laughs> was quickly dispelled. And even though he might limp a little bit when he's walking, he certainly doesn't show any effects as he goes over there to talk to Gary Tranquil, his coach. I'm particularly pleased to see Chuck come back this week, uh, but I know you are such a fine runner and a great player that uh, his frustration of last week, obviously, hurt him quite a bit. He had a very quiet week at practice, but he is certainly showing it today. I mean, as far as enthusiasm for the game. He's had uh, 28 carries thus far, Bill, for 115 yards, so it's another in excess of 100 yards a K for him. I want to mention to you that next week it'll be a noon Eastern time start for those stations carrying us live on the Freedom Football Network. Should be a good matchup, the Black Knights and the, the Red Knights. 56 seconds to go in this third quarter and Chuck Smith who has just scored the touchdown get a good look at him on the sidelines wants to become a astronaut or cosmonaut oh, look at Flingo, up almost to the 40 yard line those are good plays when the front men who are not ex very fancy ball carriers handle the kickoff and then have the composure to throw the ball back to a ball carrier who is truly dangerous this was Navy's best drive of the day. Four plays, 61 yards, and it just took them a minute and 17 seconds. It was totally dominated by the Navy offensive line. It wasn't their longest, but certainly their most efficient. One in the first quarter went 86 yards. So it's a 20 to 10 game. We have 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Pennsylvania Quakers. Maybe fighting their hearts out here today against the uh, midshipmen, but penalties have hurt something awful. Ball has slipped to Chris Flynn. Leaves his way through those holes and gets almost to the point the game for a first down. In fact, they may mark it, but it was enough. It's to me like it is. Every good ball carrier reads the blockers, has enough balance to change direction and then accelerate, as you can see Flynn doing, picking up almost a first down. And they're bringing the chains in to see if he did. Rick Frazano, do you have something for us? When I watch number 27, uh, Chris Flynn uh, run the football, reminds me of another 27. Joe Bellino, Heisman Trophy winner for Navy, had the same leg drive, the same balance, and the ability to find the open hole. What's he doing now, Rick? Joe is, I believe, still living in Massachusetts and has his own catering company. I believe that's true. After serving in the, uh, in the armed forces? He sure did. He served four years and then played some of the Patriots, and Joe was a great back and a great human being. He is a great human being. From the former Navy coach, Rick Frazano. That'll be a first down by Jim. Well, he was on the first down. And just, just over the midfield stripe for a second down and nine. He got about one and a half. Rooney's run hard today, too. He's giving Flynn a breather. We have not seen Camisio. So, I don't know. In the second half, uh, I'm wondering if that hamstring is, is simply going to keep him out of the ball game for the rest of the afternoon. Well, that's the end of three quarters now here at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Navy on top by 10. From the Big Ten, Michigan State in the third quarter, leading Illinois 23 to 14, apparently bouncing back from the defeat by Michigan last week. Missouri and Nebraska at the half. Nebraska as expected up on top. And also from the Big Eight, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma are playing today. We'll keep you up to date on that one. Second and nine. Well, Chicky, you can't find anybody. And the marker goes down. 
tricky as math. Novoselsky was out uh, running parallel with the quarterback, but he was hounded so badly that uh, Prochikia wisely decided not to throw to him. He made a very good decision. Might have been an inadvertent throw. I don't know. I think we got a wave off from the uh, from uh, Vincent Price, our referee. We we'll see it again, and you can see the Prochikia rolling out. Hits the ball away. But I think that the was offensive pass interference, it looked like to me, but I'm not positive. Third down. Now there's a marker down. Completed pass to Rob Andrews. That was an audible. Obviously, he changed his play at the line of scrimmage, but maybe he was ready for it as we look at the officials to get the call. Illegal shift? Hmm. That's what he called it. Well, let's take a look at a couple of other scores while they contemplate what to do here. We gave you that one a moment ago. Oklahoma. Mm, having a struggle against Oklahoma State, six to nothing at the half, and uh, no score in that annual shootout between Texas and Arkansas. Brigham Young over Wyoming in the first quarter. That surprises me a little bit. That surprises me more than a little bit. Well, it's fourth down, and uh, Fosnock comes in the lineup to do the punting for Pennsylvania. Mark Furley is back for the midshipman. 14:46 to go in this ball game, and maybe leading it by ten be hard to return this one real high so maybe we'll take over on the 17 yard line yeah. Fosnock has done a good job of putting the ball up in the air 32 yard boot but what's more important there was no return well what a pleasant way to spend a Saturday afternoon on the Severn this is the annual weekend of the boat show here at Annapolis and uh, I want to tell you they're the Inner Harbor has really been filled with some magnificent craft. A couple of yards by Chuck Smith. Smith has had a good day as we look at total yardage and Navy has doubled almost in Pennsylvania output. Navy player getting up uh, a little on the slow side, Tim Brunn, who was injured in the first quarter and uh, came out of the lineup. Now is going to jog off again. Troy Saunders goes in the lineup. Don Hughes comes out. Second down and eight. Ball is on the 20. Navy leading by 10. We're in the fourth quarter, 14.40 to go. Don Hall, the replacement for Chuck Smith, getting a couple of more yards. In case you joined us a little bit late, here's how the scoring went today. Hollinger getting the first touchdown of the afternoon. Navy went up 7 0, and then Grass's field goal made it 7 3. Fondukas added a pair for Navy to make it 13 3. And then in the third quarter, Novoselsky caught a little floater in the end zone by Kroshikia. And then Navy came back with really a fine drive of 61 yards, climaxed by the Chuck Smith touchdown. That's the score we have right now, 20 to 10. 13 and a half to go. Hollinger in motion. Almost picked off. That was pretty dangerous. John Sniffen and Mike Henley battling for it. Henley getting his hands on it but couldn't hold it he was in perfect position he had reacted to the ball as it was put in the air and it was a little bit low and he couldn't quite get both hands on the ball fast enough to make the catch Andy Mewick with no rush on him so to speak gets it away and it comes over midfield taken by Flynn and that's where the Quakers will have the football 30 yard boot by Navy and the Quakers are not that far from the Navy end zone, 50 yards. It is here 
at Annapolis, the home of the Naval Academy. And the midshipmen have reacted to it. They're leading by the score of 20 to 10. We have 13 18 to go in the ballgame. We've been talking about how uh, if Penn could stay in the game for the fourth quarter, and they've done that, maybe they'll threaten. First and 10 on the 50. Kochikia with a lot of time fires it. Misdirected, however, his man cut in. Saunders cut in on it instead of cutting out. Did a good job of picking up the blitz, though. The offensive line was able to protect the passer. So it makes it second and ten. Kochicki going into this game had hit 52% of his passes, but uh, he's only five of 20, so his percentage has gone down considerably this afternoon. Pass to Flynn, gets a good block, and Flynn gets it for a first down at the 35-yard line. Macbeth has to bring him down. Can't execute a screen pass any better than that when you throw a screen. You want to convince the defense that you're going to throw a pass downfield. And you can see Kochikia looking downfield and then dumping the ball off in the fat to Flynn, who had some fine blocking and also does some very good ball playing as usual for the first down. I think that was Steve Bonato, the center, who got out there and knocked that man down for him, enabling him to go that extra five or ten yards. First down on the 36. Middle pretty well jammed up. Joe Lorano, the fullback, uh, just couldn't find any room at all. I think the call was good. Uh, after you hit a screen pass for the yardage that Penn did, you normally think the linebackers are going to deepen up a little bit. Everybody's going to be thinking wide, and that's the time to call a fullback hitting quickly up the middle, but Navy did not take the bait. Second and eight, the ball on the 34. 20 to 10 is the score. Navy out in front, but Penn is in Navy territory now for the second and eight. On the end of round, Rod Andrews <laughs> ran right into the Navy man who was on the ground. Irby, Curtis Irby was right there, blocking his path. When you call a reverse and uh, the defensive team does not take the fast flow, there's just no way of getting around the corner, and you can see that Navy defense was able to turn it back in, and when you turn a reverse back in rather than letting it get outside, no chance for the play to succeed. Iowa is leading Michigan at halftime, 10 to 3 in Ann Arbor. Here's the long one. Deep man has got it. Novoselsky fumbles the throw. He's got the ball. It's the helmet of Navy. It looked like the ball. I thought the same thing. <laughs> Novoselsky goes all the way for the touchdown, his second of the day. And that's number four on the season, 39 yards. And you don't expect to hit someone that cleanly when it's third down and long. Novoselsky is wide open, as you can see, behind everybody. And there goes the <laughs> Navy helmet. <laughs> I thought it was the ball, too, Bill, but a great execution on the play by the quarterback, Kratikia, and a fine reception by Novoselsky. All right, here is Jim Grass to try for the extra point that would make it a three-point difference. It's up and good. And it's 20 to 17. That score coming with 11 minutes and 14 seconds to go in the ball game. How did that look to you, Rick Borzato, coming down there? You see I was right here in the end zone, Bill, watching that. And to me, it was a perfectly thrown football. He threw the ball into the inside of the receiver. The defender had no chance whatsoever, and they were in man-for-man -man coverage, Navy that is, but Novoselsky just beat him down the field, and it was a perfect throw. There's no defense for the perfect pass. Well, you could almost have caught Furley's helmet there rolling toward you. I don't get into the action. I stay away from it. All right, it makes it 20 to 17. Yeah, We'd, like to, pardon me. We'd like to welcome stations KCBA-TV in the Salinas Monterey area and WTWS-TV in New London, Connecticut. They have joined our Freedom Football Network. And Penn has moved very much back into this game. As we talked about at the 
Quakers can play a reasonably good first half. They'll gain confidence, and then if they can make something happen at the start of the second half, which they did, the interception being the big thing that set up the first touchdown, and now the execution. This is anybody's game right now. Here's Jim Grass. Low, kind of a wobbly kick. Goes out of bounds. That'll be a five-yard violation. Out of bounds at the seven. And Grass a little... I don't think too discouraged because that's he wanted to make that bouncing kick hoping that the oval football will take a hop that might cause a fumble and the scoring drive beautifully executed five plays 50 yards only two minutes and four seconds and the pass was hit and it was third down very close to ten but beautifully executed by the quarterback and tight end. Funny thing about that drive is that the trick play fizzled. You know, the deep reverse. Yes. And yet the straight old bread and butter paid off for him. And it's difficult to hit somebody that open on long yardage situations. He kicks it away this time. Wallace. Got a little quarter down that left sideline, and it opened up for him enough to get to the 32 or 33 yard line. Next week, Navy will travel to Pittsburgh to engage the Panthers, and Pennsylvania will return home to Franklin Field to host Yale. And Gary Tranquil is thinking this time we have got to put a drive together. Penn has become very dangerous. 11 minutes to go in the ball game. Burn on first down. Throws, it's complete to Curtis Brown. Again, up to about the 36-yard line. It's about five yards. Castanero making the stop, number 19. Unusual to throw to the fullback. It's not unusual to throw to a tailback, but uh, fullback has difficulty normally getting wide enough, quick enough. But you can see Brown taking over the ball and then the rollout pass gave him time to run his pattern. Completion occurs, burn through the ball right on target. Chuck Smith puts his head down, but the opening close is pretty good. Mike Henley and Mike Lister, numbers 57 and 94, you know, in that stop. So that brings up a third down. And Byrne is having a very good day throwing the ball. He's 12 of 24 from 144 yards. Joe Brennan is apparently shaken up on the play. He's the heaviest lineman at 275. Comes from Brentwood, Tennessee. Red Romo escorting him off. Red's a fairly big guy himself. Look how he's dwarfed by Brennan. This is a big Navy team. Height and weight. Third and three. Toss Chuck Smith, however, he leg drive puts him out of bounds at the 32. He had to, uh, excuse me, 37. He had to go to the 38. Uh, that was a doggone good play there by number 21, Donald Wilson. And you've got to credit the Penn defense for keeping Navy from making a first down in this critical situation. They're going to get possession of the ball again, which gives them an opportunity to move with their offense. Good kick by Muick. Sends Flynn deep to the 26-yard line, and there's nothing there for him. Number 49 down there very quickly for the midshipman was Andre Stokes on the specialty team. That score is wrong, by the way. Pennsylvania has 17. First down for Pennsylvania on the 26-yard line. Trailing here by three. Plenty of time to go, 9.54. Well, Flynn was able to get outside, and I'll tell you, a couple of more steps and he might have gone. Got it up for a very quick first down at the 36. Well, I know they're going to spot it back just a little bit. Very close to a full 10 yards. A little bit of misdirection on the play. Murano went to the top of the screen before... 
Flynn came back to the bottom of the screen and that little fake in the backfield had the Navy defense moving one step in the wrong direction. Close enough to measure this one. But you pointed out that uh, this particular drive is very critical for both teams, even though should uh, Penn score, let's say, in the average of five minutes, which is what these uh, scoring drives have taken, there would still be four and a half minutes to go on the ball game. So, you know, it's, uh, it's anybody's guess here with only a three-point difference. And the difference in the Penn team, uh, they have avoided penalties very well thus far in this half. Look at that hole. And look how quickly it closed. It looked like it was absolutely uh, that you could drive a truck through it. And all of a sudden, Enoch Blazes, a senior from Springfield, Illinois, number 75, slammed it shut. He's a very fine nose guard. Centers have a very difficult time handling him. Now, you know, he, he almost quit the team. He was a defensive tackle, and he was discouraged a year ago, and he finally went to the coaching staff and said, look, do you think I can play middle guard? I'm not getting anywhere as a tackle. And they said, sure, we'll put you there. <laughs> 14 tackles, unassisted, 13 assisted going into this game. Nice draw play. Bruni gets through to about the 42-yard line. Well, the ideal thing here for the Quakers would be simply to grind it out minute by minute and get it down there within the last minute or so and push it into score with no chance to return. And to keep possession, they need to pick up the five yards on this play. Time of possession very close, as is the score. Third down and a short five. Chickia bangs it in there to Flynn. He's got the first down, and he got his nose right on the midfield strike. Things getting a little tense. Rick, what do you have? Uh, Bill, both you and Bud uh, said it'd be nice if Penn could uh, control the ball on the ground. That's what they'd like to do, but it would be a lot easier if they had Rich Camisio okay, in there, and it doesn't look like we're going to see him in the second half. Well, I don't know how much easier it would be. Certainly, with, with cut down on, uh, on Flynn being tired, he's going out now, I notice, and uh, Bruni has come in in place of him. One thing that uh, Ed Zubra has done all year long is to keep alternating those running backs and keeping them fresh. First and ten. Here's Bruni. Well, he gets it into Navy territory at the 47. Again, that little bit of misdirection. Uh, Navy is reacting so rapidly defensively that that little misdirection move takes them one step off balance. Rick, I don't know whether you can tell or not, but it, it seems to butt into me that the hitting has been as hard today as we've seen in any game this year. Would you concur with that, Rick? Yeah, I concur with it. They are hitting, they are squaring their shoulders and their pads to the ball here. A lot of hitting going on. Well, you can hear the pads thumping up here. Second and six. Win. Very hard as he got his nose right on the line by Mark Furley, and that just drove him back. But I think his point to, uh, of progress was about the 43. So again, we have a situation where it'll be third down and about two. Those are tough yards to pick up consistently, but Penn has done a good job of it here in the second half. Bruni comes in again for Flynn, who keeps alternating. Now they send Flynn back. I think they like the experience on this particular play. Well, you better get somebody out of there. You're going to have 12 men on the field. There goes Rob Andrews, and Kochikia calls timeout. There were only six seconds left on the 25-second clock, and he didn't want to risk a five-yard uh, stupid penalty at this point. 6.28 to go in the ball game, and it's close. Bill Fleming, Rick Porzano, Bud Wilkinson. We're back here at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis. It's been quite an afternoon of football here. The people who turned out for it knew it was going to be a good battle, and they were not disappointed, and it is not over. Six minutes and 28 seconds to go in the ballgame, and it's 20 for Navy, 17 for Pennsylvania. First time these two teams have met since 1960, and I think Rick Porzano may remember the last meeting. 
You remember? I coached in that last meeting uh, when we won 27 to zip. But I also coached in the one the year before when Penn tied us 22 to 22 up at Franklin Field. Matter of fact, I should say we tied Penn. We were lucky to come out of with a tie. It's always been a tough football game. Now they go with a power eye. A different formation in the backfield. Third down and two. Ball on the left end broke. Novoselsky raised up, and that forced uh, the uh, Navy team to react to it. And it's going to cost uh, the Quakers five, I believe. And a very critical penalty one more time for Penn. There it is. Watch the top of the screen here. You can see the movement. He was not going to go out on a pass unless he was thinking at that time he was making a pass protection block, even though they were lined up in the power eye, which normally you would expect to be a strong running formation. Third and seven. And again, the penalties are very difficult for Penn. Almost double. Uh, the brigade is whooping it up a little bit here, and maybe one of the reasons Novoselsky jumped the last time because they were yelling pretty loud. I not have heard the signal. Ooh, that was close. Two Navy defenders in front of Scott's uh, Scungio and uh, Curtis Irby, who's played himself quite a game in a reserve role today to Mike Heron at strong safety, was one of those two. If they hadn't been so close, I think they'd have made the interception. <laughs> kind of interfered with each other. Well, now what? Pennsylvania will hope for is a fumble on this punt as Fosnock will kick to Furley. Furley wasn't bashful on that. No fair catch. He just took it and drove his head right into Chris Wilkins. And so that'll be Navy's ball at the 15 to 20 yard line at 611. Now the question, I was going to say, Bud, what, what it, the strategy here is uh, if you can't move it on the ground, do you take that chance and throw? I mean, Byrne has been, what would you say, so-so uh, today on the passes? He's been a little better than that, uh, but uh, I think you are feeling totally that we have got to make a first down, and if it takes a throw to do it, we're going to do it because they must keep possession at this point in the game. His completion record's okay, it's just that he's had two interceptions. Smith outside and a good defensive play by Brad Hines, co-captain, the rover number 46. That's the way to stop Chuck Smith. You've got to go low and get him around the ankles and just clamp them together. Hines makes a very fine play. I think he was reacting up before the play was snapped. Ball was snapped because he was in the backfield when he hit Smith. And a safety man can't get there that quickly unless he is keen when the ball is snapped. Hand off goes to Smith and wedges it out to about the 22 yard line. It's not going to be enough. Obviously, it's Fortna and Lista on the stop, and Pennsylvania playing very tenaciously here, trying to get this ball. They're only trailing by three points, and we have five and a half minutes to go. And the two first downs they made in their last possession, uh, if they can stop Navy here, will give them good field position on the exchange. Third down. About eight to go. Byrne is hit and set for the first time today. Hippen Steele was the first man to hit him, and Lista put the clamp on him. This is a fine defensive football team by Penn. They blitz well. They play the run well. They were burned by passes in the first half, but they're a very solid team. Hippen Steele, a junior from Tampa, Florida. Forcing Navy to give up the football here. And Flynn dances around and gets more out of it than you can believe. He had no right whatsoever to make eight yards on that. He's the only guy that thought he could. <laughs> Nobody had either other team did. He was absolutely stopped cold. You can see he didn't have any room to run at all. But that's that stop, dart, stop. Dart again, go forward, keep moving, keeping your legs. And he got to be, had to be hit from behind to be brought down. A total of 13, uh, five easy, easy ones, and eight of them were impossible. And good field position on the 42-yard line. Now, 426. Bru 
the uh, fullback, Lorano. Joe Lorano getting a couple. Chad Van Halsen on the stop. Navy defenders talking it up along the line. They realize that they only have that slim three-point lead and that plenty of time on the clock against a very dangerous Pennsylvania team. And it's a team that's been flamboyant. I go back to a fourth down and one on the seven-yard line. Any other team in the country, you're looking for them to go in and get the first down. They go in and pass for the touchdown. So you know, play action faking on that play, too, though. Right. And here's Kochikia pumping short and going long. He has Novoselsky. He's got it on the six-yard line. First and goal to go for Penn. And once more, the play action just destroyed the Navy defensive secondary pattern. Looked like the ball carry was going to be the fullback, and then the short pump, and then the pop downfield. Receiver wide open because they had reacted so hard to the running fake. Well, Novoselsky has been quite a star today, and I think he made up for that jumping back on the uh, on the penalty that was rather costly. Power eye. Rooney in motion. Misdirection. Chris Flynn is hit at the three-yard line and forced back, but it's second down and three yards to go for the touchdown that would pencil, put Pennsylvania out in front. We have three minutes and nine seconds. The clock is moving. And once more, the misdirection play, trying to keep the Navy defense in succeeding slightly off balance. As we mentioned before, Pennsylvania plays in the 1AA division of the NCAA football scheme of things. And Navy, of course, is a 1A school. This is the only 1A division opponent that Pennsylvania meets all year long. And this is the game they pointed for. 2.40 to go. Second and three on the three. Kochikia goes left. He has a man wide open at the end line. It's Novoselsky for his third touchdown of the day. He beat Curley one yard inside the end line. And Pennsylvania has taken the lead. Marvelous but execution on that play. Once again, the fake, and you can see how pleased the receiver is. If we watch the chicky go back, he makes the running fake. He set, throws, fakes, and then delivers the ball as he sees his receiver wide open. When he had that much time, Belichewski could come back against the grain. Navy was moving to the opposite side, and he was wide open making the catch. And here is Jim Grass as the kick blocked. Well, that could make a big difference. Instead of 24-20, it's 23-20, and Navy could possibly tie it up if they can't punch it in with 2.32 to go. So we are seeing quite a football game here today. And the Mark Blazes was the one that got it, bud. The way we felt about it going in, this team has kept them in the second half alive, and they will have so much confidence they'll come back and play. And you can see how well... Kochekia kept his poise, waited until the receiver could move against the grain to be wide open to make the reception for the score. You can make a highlight film with Novoselsky and Kochekia today, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> you surely could. Three touchdowns that combination has produced. And Navy has three timeouts remaining, which is important to them with the clock at 232. And a man like Chuck Smith in the lineup. You bet. I wouldn't recommend kicking to him been an uphill battle for Penn today but I tell you this the Quakers even though they didn't have their starting uh, left halfback they certainly came came on strong in this second half and played very well well without it Camizio was out with a hamstring and um, although he wasn't seriously hurt we saw him on the sidelines watching he simply became a spectator We'll be naming our Chevrolet players of the game here very shortly. As voted on by Rick and Bob and myself. Here is the boot. Goes to Vernon Wallace at the eight. Wallace tears away from one man and fights his way to the 35. Fumbles the ball. It's still loose. It's covered by Penn. He had a good idea, but not at this point in the game. Wallace makes the catch very easily. He starts upfield, and he's determined to put something on the board. He fights. He gets away. It appears that he might break something, and then as he's in the grasp, he decides, I should lateral the ball. 
Barry Lowell, too, was not expecting it. Ball bounces free, loose, and Penn finally recovers. And it looked like 97, Bill Coggle was the man who got it. First down on the 31-yard line, and Navy now is in deep trouble. Penn leading 23-20, 2.22 to go in the ball game. Chris Flynn just dances and weaves much like a boxer and gets it down to the 30. But the clock is the important thing. 2-11, 2-10. I feel sorry for uh, Wallace because he fought so hard to get that ball up there as far as he possibly could. Mentioned Penn has been troubled by penalties, but Navy has just been killed by turnovers this season. Two minutes and 11 seconds to go in the ball game, and they're taking a, an extra tuck in that strap of the uh, rib pads. I think Navy took a timeout. And if you're the Penn coaching staff, you're thinking we need to make a first down while they use up their remaining timeouts, the Naval Academy, that is. Well, Chuck Smith is hoping there that he gets a chance to get back in the game. Uh, is a very dim possibility at this point. 23-20, Pennsylvania out in front by a three. Two minutes and 11 seconds to go, and the ball is second down and about nine, just as you can see inside the 30-yard line. There's no two-minute warning to give you a timeout in college ball either, Bill. You don't get that extra timeout. Well, the Service Academy is having a kind of a tough day today. Holy Cross defeated Army. Notre Dame over Air Force, and now Pan over Navy. And if this prevails, you can bet that the one thing that they'll all set their sights on is winning that Commander-in-Chief trophy to save the season. Ball down to the 29-yard line. Morano the fullback. And another timeout called by Navy. What does that leave, one? Yes. And they've been able to call the timeouts very quickly. Two minutes and 11 seconds around the clock when Penn took possession after recovering the fumble and their own, there's still 2.05, so that's three seconds of play. Let me give you some finals here. Yale over Columbia, 39 to nothing. William and Mary over Delaware, 24 to 18. Lehigh over Princeton, 48 to 28. Penn State over Syracuse, 42 to three. Temple over Virginia Tech, 29 to 13. It'll be interesting to see what Paul Palmer did today in his quest for the Heisman Trophy. Clemson over Duke, 35 to three. Harvard over Dartmouth, 42 to 26. Cornell, 27, Brown, nine. Boston College, 41, Louisville, seven. Florida defeated Rutgers, 15 to three. Notre Dame, 31, Air Force, three. And Holy Cross, 17, Army, 14. Be an interesting matchup next week, and I think a rather even one between Army and Rutgers at the Meadowlands. We'll be bringing you that game at 12 Eastern. That's a change in our normal schedule from uh, before the rest of this year. Third down. About eight to go for Pennsylvania. 2.05 to play in the ball game. And here is Prochikia back to pass. He goes deep again. He has a man. Touchdown. What a catch. Jim Bruni, who is listed as a third string tailback, leaped up with three men, bud. Right there, he got it for a 29-yard touchdown. The running fake, I think, got the Navy defense coming one step forward because he's behind everybody here. He really does make a great catch, but he was in the clear behind everyone, and he made a marvelous reception, but Kochikia made a great, great throw under pressure. Well, this Kochikia has been something today. He's come on awfully strong, and this whole team has come on strong in the second half. Four touchdown passes by Jim Krochikia. 29 to 20, this could be the 30th point by Jim Grass. It is up, and it's good. And Pennsylvania 